ever updated your DSP32 firmware over BLE, wirelessly, safely, and like a pro. No? Well, then this video is your gateway. Yay! In this episode part 1, we are unlocking BLE OTA updates using the ESP32's Blue Droid Stack and ESP IDF, all controlled straight from your PC using Python and Bluetooth. We will walk through the code and witness live packet transfer tracking, but that's just the beginning. And hey, don't miss part 2, where we dive deeper into OTA reliability, rollback mechanisms, and the real world use case. Namaste and welcome to Avinashi Tech. Last time, we successfully uploaded binary files to our ESP32 using OTG cable and an Android app. We also promised to make a comeback with the video on OTA. So here I am. Let's quickly get an overview about OTA as in what it is and where is it really helpful. So OTA signifies sending data packets wirelessly to your device and writing those data packets to certain flash partition which after proper verification will be ready for operation in the next boot cycle. So when you make products in which you are not willing or it's not possible to provide physical access to the user or when you don't want that cable plug and play mess or when you want an efficient way to provide continuous update of your device features or bug fixes, you rely on OTA. In this video, we are gonna go with OTA over BLE. Before going into OTA side of the code, you need to be clear on how to set up your device as BLE peripheral using ESP IDF. We have already got you covered there in one of our previous videos. Do check it out to learn more. Okay, so in VS Code, we have ESP32 based project directory and a script directory with Python script that will help push firmware from our PC end over BLE. A partition table is also present in ESP32 project directory Let's switch over to our whiteboard and discuss about some crucial topics. First, let's talk about advertisement part of our device. The main advertisement data comprises of a device name and manufacturer data. We have our device name as Avinashi Tech and the custom manufacturer data is of total 8 bytes. Out of that, First two bytes are company identifier and is set to 0 hex 02 E5, which represents Espressive Inc. You can find more about it in the Bluetooth SIG documentation. Remaining six bytes are set to the base MAC address of our ESP32 device. Next up, we have scan response advertising data. This one advertises our service UUID. So our OTA service has a 128 bit long UUID that starts with something like 0 hex 6 f 97 and so on. That's almost 16 bytes. Obviously, this is discovered only when scan request is made by the client device. In the attribute section, we have two services which are registered. First one is device information service with two characteristics, manufacturer name and model number. The first is the former is set to expressive while the latter is set to OTA 
version 1.1. These are all constants. In our attribute table, we have a primary service, two characteristic declaration, both having property read, and two characteristic values that are related to the above constants. For our OTA service, we have OTA control characteristic and OTA data characteristic. But this time the declaration property is read, write, and notify as well. That gives way to a OTA client characteristic configuration descriptor or CCCD. OTA control can have enum values like OTA request, OTA done, OTA request acknowledged, OTA done acknowledged, etc. For OTA data characteristic, property is write only. And the value for this would be the chunks of firmware data with specified packet size of 253 bytes at a time. So that was some basic discussion. Let's now talk about overall flow of the program. Once code is running on the ESP32 device, we will turn on Bluetooth on our PC and run the script. The script first searches for available device nearby based on the MAC address filtering and UUID scanning. So if any device which is advertising has the same MAC address and service UUID, we connect to it. Once we are connected to Avinash Tech, we turn on notifications by writing OTA control characteristic. This triggers ESP underscore gates underscore write underscore event on the ESP32 side and updates OTA control value variable. Next, the script sends packet size data by writing the OTA data characteristic. Again, gates write event is triggered on the ESP32 side and packet size variable is updated. Now the script makes a OTA start request by writing to OTA control characteristic. Again, we get write event and OTA control value variable is updated. Now the script waits for an acknowledgement from the server or ESP32 side. And within the ESP32 code, we have a task OTA main which is running in parallel. It checks if notification is enabled and if the OTA control value variable is equal to OTA request enum value. Then we call ESP OTA begin function and send acknowledgement back to the script. The script checks if acknowledgement is received and then it starts to break the firmware file into chunks of packet size which was earlier defined. Once that's completed, script starts sending the chunks in sequence to OTA data characteristic, which again triggers the write event on the ESP32 side. ESP OTA write is called to write those chunks into the correct flash partition. Once the writing is finished, script sends OTA done request to OTA control characteristic. And once again, OTA control value variable is updated. Now the script again waits for an acknowledgement and the OTA main task. We compare OTA control value with that OTA done enum value. And if everything goes good, we call ESP OTA end function as well as send an acknowledgement back to the script. Once the script receives this acknowledgement, it disables notification. Further, it calculates the time taken to complete OTA transfer and displays it on the screen. Finally, after sending acknowledgement, ESP32 restarts and boots from the newly flashed OTA section. Let's get back to VS Code and try to make sense of everything. In the gap profile, we have mentioned OTA service UUID. 
in our primary advertisement data, scan response is set to false, and we have device name, manufacturer data, and some flags. In our scan response advertisement data, we have set scan response to true and have included the service UUID. Then there are some basic params of advertising. Next, in gate profile, we can see OTA firmware data chunk carry with a max limit of 256 bytes. We have application profile structure applicable to all our profiles, but currently we only have OTA and we will register callback for that. Next, we'll create attribute table for device information service and OTA service. And this is something we have already discussed on the whiteboard, so you can have a look at it. Next up, scrolling down, we see functions like show wanted devices and remove all wanted devices. We don't need to worry about that. Following that, we have gap event handler, and in that, under the local privacy event, we prepare our custom manufacturer data. We call advertisement configuration function for both primary advertising data and scan response data. This then causes the respective event to be triggered, and from there, advertising finally starts. Next up in get profile event handler, we have a register event triggered when application profile is registered. We kind of set our local device name, then we enable local privacy, which kind of gives our device a random address. We call function to create our device information service attribute table and in its respective event, we print the attribute table handles and start the device. Further, we repeat this process for OTA service as well. In our write event, a main magic happens, and you already know about OTA control flag, OTA CCCD flag, and about OTA data as well. So when another flag, which is known as updating, is false, packet size is modified. And when this updating flag is true, Partition is written with firmware chunks. We also have events like empty request, connect, disconnect, and so on. Next up is our OTA main task. But before that, let's jump to our application main. In the beginning, we read the current booted partition section. Then we mark the firmware valid. We will make this section better in the next part. So just hang on for a while. After this, we have basic Bluetooth initialization functions and some security based parameters. All right, finally create OTA main task. Let's jump to it. In there, we just check if descriptor flag is set or not, as that causes notification to be enabled. If it is not, then we kind of do nothing. But if it is, then we check OTA control flag and as per our earlier discussion, we take appropriate actions based on its value. Once OTA updates is successful, we finally restart our device. Let's also have a look into our script, which we'll be using Bleak module. We have mentioned all the UUID and manufacturer data in the beginning. We have a search device function, then a OTA callback function. Lastly, there is our main function in which we send a file path to the bin file that needs to be uploaded via OTA. OS module makes sure if that file exists or not. If it does, then we proceed by enabling notification, sending OTA request, OTA done, and then finally, we disable the notification. All right, that's set up. Let's get our ESP32 board finally connected to the PC and flash this initial firmware using the flash command. Once that's done, we will switch to monitor mode. You will notice the bootloader shows which partition is currently booted. And yep, BLE advertising has started. 
Now remember, all logs you are seeing are just from the serial terminal. Let's turn on Bluetooth on our PC and open up PowerShell. I'll navigate to the correct directory and then quickly switch back to VS Code and stop monitoring for now. It's time to create a new task. Nothing fancy, just something that prints a message after a short delay. I'll build this code, but remember, I will not flash it. So, our board is still running the older version that doesn't have this new print statement. Let's hop back to monitoring. Quick reminder, our OTA scripts uses the build output of this project. So it will always push the latest build version. Cool. Let's go back to PowerShell and run our OTA script. As soon as the script finds the device, it starts with the OTA process. And if we jump into the monitor, you'll see status updates coming in from both sides. A few moments later. After a few minutes, the update finally completes and boom, the board reboots. We now see it booted from the updated partition and the image is marked as valid. Woohoo! Congrats! OT is successful. So, that wraps up part 1. You have just seen how to set up BLE OTA updates on the ESP32 using ESP IDF, from code to live packet transfers. But we are just getting started. In part 2, we will talk about what happens if transfer crashes midway, how to avoid breaking your device, and yes, a live rollback demo that can save your future self from debugging nightmares. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it and hit that bell icon if you are serious about embedded systems. And don't forget, the final demo ties it all together with a ds 18 temperature sensor and LCD monitor or LCD display, OTA controlled real time. See you in part 2. Don't forget to like and share this video. Signing off.